Hello, everybody. Welcome. Permi uh, permission to dance as a request from Harvey. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Pretty good to be in session. Today, uh, for the first time running this experience, welcome, everybody. Super excited to have this skills challenge with you to hand out some swag, to figure out things about the, the nonprofit, how it works. And that's a really kind of important little niche within the Salesforce ecosystem. So happy that we have Coach Nicole to be able to guide us along today. Introducing your clicked coach, uh, everyone, you might know Nicole. And if you don't, she's going to tell us about herself. Hello. Hello. Um, I'm Nicole. I'm in Melbourne. Um, I'm not in the forest. This is just the background walls. Um, uh, Melbourne, Australia, not Melbourne, the US. Um, I grew up in the not-for-profit sector in London, where I worked for various not-for-profits and came across Salesforce in 2008. And then have spent the last, can't do the math, 16 years, far out, I'm old, um, working mostly with not-for-profits implementing Salesforce. Right on, right on. And Nicole is in Melbourne, loves hot chocolate. And uh, I'm trying to think of another icebreaker question. Come up with your own icebreaker and then answer it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, 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 I'm often, well, you off, one often get asked, gets asked, what's your party trick? And my, mine is fitting my fist in my mouth, but I won't, I won't share that live on screen that can be a bit off-putting i do remember you saying that that was the weirdest thing about you that you can yeah. fit your fist in your mouth rohan asks a very normal question <laughs> dogs or cats <laughs> oh dogs in fact dogs. none none neither until the family convinced me we needed a dog and now we have a dog and she's all right yeah whatever but yeah dogs over cats dogs if necessary all right, we'll take it. <laughs> All right, so uh, here is what we're going to be doing in the next hour together. Overview, prompt, what are the goals, what are the rules, what are we all about here at Clicked, and the scenario details. We're going to have a topic discussion, why it's important, and connect with all of you if you've got any questions just to kick off the session. And then what we want to do for the majority of this time is see that work, see those presentations, ask live questions and communicate and learn from each other um, on stage in the Q&A. There will also be some time for reflection. So uh, if you do want to present, you can raise your hand right now. We'll start building up that queue and uh, go from there after the coach discussion. Here is what we are all about here at Clicked. We learn from each other. It's fun. It's safe. It's different every single time that we want run one of these experiences. And it's just pretty awesome. If you're here for the first time, everyone, can you drop me a heart emoji if this is your first clicked experience ever? And if you are returning, can you give me some confetti? Confetti for the returners and hearts for the newbies. Yay! Amazing. All right. Well, so happy to have everybody here. Um, and I'm just checking in the chat. Dogs, dogs, dogs. Here's my thing. I'm with you, Nicole. My dog. I like my dog. I don't like any other dog. And I'll probably get a cat before my dog passes on because I'm not sure that any other dog can ever replace him. So support, support for that. Mm. Yeah. It's okay. Cats are fine, but I think I'm a cat inside. So it just, it doesn't vibe. Anyways, how do I interact in the session for those of you who are here for the first time? First and foremost, raise your hand and get live feedback or work through a challenge if you're stuck, if you need guidance. And the first two presenters today, since this is a beta experience, we're going to be uh, giving out some mugs and hoodies. I got approval from Santa Jeff on this one. So there you go. Another way to interact in the session is use the chat, communicate with each other. It is your microphone. This is where the fun happens. And the questions can happen in two places. You can ask a question live. If you have 
questions about the task, if you've got questions about nonprofit or, you know, how to implement it in Salesforce, since there's kind of two ways that you can do that now, you can come on live and ask your question and you can also use the Q&A box. Uh, this is really, if you don't want your question to get lost in the chat, because it can sometimes be really active, then use the Q&A um, to make sure that I am able to see it. So with that, let's introduce the scenario and the task. This is a fun one. You've been hired to come in as an admin working for the World Health Organization. The World Health Organization has been using tools like Sheets, Email, and WiseHive for grant management. They now seek to adopt Salesforce to streamline operations, improve efficiency, and enhance their grant approval process capabilities. You are going to assist them in implementing recommendations slash building solutions for how they can adjust their current instance to support this objective, reducing manual administrative costs, and then be able to allocate more funds to their causes. You previously had some interview notes from uh, Maria. I'll send those in the chat in a little bit so you can refer to it again, but here's the task. First off, you gotta set up your dev org or your playground and also your nonprofit success pack. There is the supplemental resources for those of you going back after the session, check in the LMS for a how-to guide on how to do that. Super simple here today, set up and customize a campaign. Title it, the water sanitation fund. I feel like we're doing a super badge or like a trailhead module with this task set with giving such specific directions. Set up a campaign entitled water sanitation fund. Create a record type that will be used for grant applications, include relevant fields that might be relevant to someone applying for a grant. Ensure that the new grant applications are linked to the campaigns. And when you can see the campaign page, you can see the current grant applications. That is a definition of done or acceptance criteria of sorts. And if you double check your campaign page to see if the team has visibility into money awarded or money remaining, bonus points. There were more tasks, but I couldn't fit them on this slide. So we're gonna roll with this. Refer to the LMS if you wanna see more. All right, everyone, the time has come. If you're new to AirMeet, if you wanna share your work, Find that raise your hand button now and raise your hand to get in the queue. Uh, we've got Jana up first, but first off, let's have a quick coach discussion on the topic. All right, introduce us. Let's imagine I'm totally new to Salesforce and I wanna know what is the nonprofit cloud? How do I use it? Why is it important? Five minutes, tell us everything we need to know. All right, gosh, five minutes, where to focus. Um, from the get-go, Salesforce has been committed to supporting the for-purpose or not-for-profit sector, whichever term you'd like to use. Organizations that aren't around to make money, they're around to improve the world we live in, in various different ways. And Salesforce from the get-go has said, we wanna support those organizations, both through the 1% model that they have, 1% of product, 1% of time, and 1% of money. So they donate to not-for-profits, they donate licensing, and they donate time. But they also committed many, many, many years ago to building out solutions specific to the not-for-profit sector. So long before there was health cloud or financial services cloud or manufacturing cloud, any of these clouds that have their own kind of built-out processes, there was the non-profit success pack. I think it was about a decade old at least. Oh, probably more than that now, actually. Um, and it's always been, for the most part, focused on fundraising, started off focusing on fundraising. Then it introduced a whole bunch of other things around, because not all not-for-profits fundraise, right? Many of them don't. Many of them receive grants and many of them give out grants like um, WHO. So um, they broadened it out to include grant management features, to include program management features. So um, if you're fundraising or getting grants to deliver services to people, um, there's uh, modules in the nonprofit success pack that can help you do that. Um, so yeah, it's it's kind of grown a lot over the years, often developed through community engagement, um, community sprints, so actual people from the not-for-profit sector contributing to how they think the solution should be built. So it's it's been cutting edge right from day one, which um, I don't think people realize. And I was on a call the other day 
I think it's now something like 70,000 not-for-profits around the world use Salesforce, and it is their biggest single industry. So it's it's huge. It's massive. Wow. I had no idea that there were that many. Mm. <laughs> that there were that many. Well, first of all, nonprofits, obviously, there's, there's a bunch, but 70,000 across the world that use Salesforce specifically. Yeah. Wow. That's, yeah. that's, it's, that's a lot. It's next level, right? Next level. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and for those who are not familiar with those community sprints, Nicole, you want to tell us a little bit more about what those are? Like how, how can we use that as a resource to learn about not nonprofit work in Salesforce? Yeah. Um, so I've done one community sprint. There's only been one so far in-person sprint in Australia. So I did one virtually, which I think was a little bit of a different experience, but they're, um, <clears throat> they're day, a day, usually a day long experience of people coming together. They, um, the team pick four or five topics that have been identified as things that the community wants to work on. It could be as varied as building out a widget to help I don't know, do do a particular thing or building out more documentation on something. And these these topics can often span multiple sprints across time, right? So the, the expectation isn't that you're going to deliver everything in a day. Um, but they're a bit like hackathons, I suppose. Um, there's one in Sydney uh, at the end of February after World Tour. Um, and they're just a good way to get involved and get to know people, um, get to have hands-on experience with the solution and yeah build be part of the community that builds out new features so if you can find one in your area i would and you have the time i would absolutely recommend going along yeah yeah that's that's super cool i i did one i don't know a year ago that was super fun but it was all virtual they have a slack channel yeah. they have a very active community if you can do it in person it's great but if not you don't have to be bound by your location very true. Okay. Well, anything else, any tips you can give us on grant management campaigns, send us in the right direction, then we'll kick it off. <laughs> um, I, my tip would be always make best use of the pre-existing out of the box functionality. Check out what's there first before going off and building something new and exciting. Yeah, isn't that a good lesson for <laughs> for Salesforce packs in general? Get to know those yeah. out of the box features. <laughs> Amazing. All right, well, I'm gonna bring Jana onto the stage shortly here. We do have a question from Conrad in the Q&A box. Are person accounts used in nonprofit and what is your recommendation? Oh, thorny topic. So, um, all right, a little bit of history. Nonprofit success pack, which is what we're playing with today, unless you've gone down the nonprofit cloud route, both are fine, um, is the old brilliant solution that Salesforce has had for over a decade. Non and that uses accounts and contacts and has its own kind of household model. Nonprofit cloud, which is the new and improved, if you like, um, version that was released last year, uses person accounts. I spent over a decade saying, I hate person accounts. And I think I still do, but that's what nonprofit cloud uses. So it kind of is what it is, right? You have to get your head around it. You have to use them. I can see pros and cons. Um, we're doing a nonprofit cloud fundraising implementation at the moment. And um, there are some things you can't do with person accounts that we're finding a little bit limiting, but you know, it, it's the devil, you know, um, there were limitations. There are limitations with nonprofit success pack. There are limitations with nonprofit cloud. You just need to know what they mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. And in in terms of accounts versus person accounts, can you explain oh. like what what mm. the difference is? <laughs> I can try. So standard Salesforce data model is that you have an account and a contact record, right? So the account is the organization. Um, uh, has things like the name of the organization, the address, the website, etc. stuff about the entity. In the for-profit sector, that's usually considered a household. And the nonprofit success pack has a household kind of bunch of functionality all around managing and, and linking people together through households. And then you have the contact, the individual, the person, and that can be an employee that works at an organization, or it can be 
um, a household member, right? And so there's the first name, last name, email address, all the stuff about the person. Now, person accounts. So, so in the old days with nonprofit success pack, um, whenever you create a person, you get the associated household. And so you end up with two records. And I suppose if you look at various other clouds, like I think Health Cloud uses person accounts as default. Um, anything where, where you're really working on a B2C, a business to customer um, model, Salesforce seem to be going down this person account route. And the person account route is where the account and contact are kind of smooshed together. You still have the account object, you still have the contact object um, in the back end, like if you go into the setup area, but in the front end, they're kind of smooshed together. And so rather than ending up with two records, you have one, which I guess that saves on data storage um, and allows you to do a, a few other bits and pieces around linking people together. Um, so yeah, person accounts, they're, they're, uh, they're fun um there are yeah we we are we yeah you, you know if you want to create a, a new field i think you do it on the contact but you know you do it on the account but then you change the page layout. like you have to figure it out you, i would do some trailheads on it there's some things that you changed on the contact record uh, contact object and there's things that you change on the account object so they do take some learning gotcha gotcha um, and Abigail asks, last question for now, uh, what are the limitations with person accounts in NPC non nonprofit cloud? So um, one that we came across yesterday, and I will try and get this right, um, is that you can't, you can't do a quick action on a person account, I think, right? So from a, from a user perspective, from a user experience perspective, we've built up solutions where you know you've got a bunch of quick actions on a contact record like um, create case or uh, log a donation those sorts of things we can't necessarily use those functions now on nonprofit cloud yeah that makes sense well i'm not sure why exactly that is i'm sure you can explain it in the schema builder and and why it works out that way but i'm sure there's advantages as well Okay, uh, Jana, I'm going to bring you up to the stage now. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Uh, hi, Jana. I haven't seen you since Dreamforce. How the heck are you? Are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. It Jana has was my minute. swag buddy for, for the quest through Dreamforce. We were together for like three days. I'm super excited to see you. Are you going to TDX? I'm not. I got accepted as a speaker, but I have a. I'm running a marathon that week, so wow. I won't be. Playing. Okay. <laughs> Fun. In any case, Jana, go ahead and share your screen. The stage is yours. Okay. Let's make sure and get the right screen open. Sorry. Give me a second here. All good, All right. Rohan. I'm waiting for the button for the GIF. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, we can see your campaign. Okay, so this was a challenge for me because I've built a few NPSP orgs for people and I've never had to touch campaigns. So, and campaigns are my nemesis. So, um, <laughs> anywho, <laughs> um, I like the Kanban view. So, there it is. Um, so, I created the campaign. And I also, I made the water sanitation, the hierarchy, the parent campaign, and then I just showed that um, you could add um, mm -hmm. child campaigns to it. Um, Maria was really frustrated with all of her files and Google Docs and everything, so I showed that she could add it here. Um, campaign member. And then I made the opportunity, and so this is the... Um, Sorry, if you go to opportunities and go here, uh, this is the grant application associated with the uh, campaign. So um, I did the uh, dynamic forms and I tried to make everything look neat and tidy. Um, 
let's see, I have the grant period start and end date, which are out of the box with NPSP. Um, what did I add extra? I did this very last minute, so I'm sorry, I'm not all prepared here. Um, oh, I added a decision status field and review notes just for whomever is going through this. And then I also did a budget status um, budget details where the person filling out the uh, request could add a breakdown of the costs. I did not have time to build all of that into it. So I just put a text field on here. Um, yeah, so that's basically what I did and I would love feedback on it. <laughs> Awesome. Can you can you show me what the stages are for the um, the, the the opportunity? Yes. Oh, at the top here. Cool. Or these awesome. stages? Yeah. 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 I condensed that to take out. I didn't make any special ones, but I took out the ones I didn't think were necessary. Like, mm. um, uh, what was it? Price review or whatever. Yeah. I, I took out all those extras and this is this is the interesting thing about i think the, the interesting thing about grant management is that um typically opportunities are about money coming in to an organization whether that's a for profit or for purpose organization whereas with this form of the grant making that that you know the who are doing is money going out right and so you're kind of treating the opportunity as a bit of a upside down kind of thing um and the campaign as well, a campaign usually has opportunities linked to it. So a not-for-profit might send out an appeal for uh, to raise money at the end of the financial year or at the end, you know, before Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever special, um, you know, type in China, it might be the Chinese New Year, whatever, whatever, whenever the period is that people tend to give money where you are, a not-for-profit will often send out an appeal at that time and ask for money and there'll be a campaign for that and all the donations that come in are, lo are logged as opportunities and linked to that campaign right so you can see how well the campaign is doing whereas here the campaign is kind of doing the opposite it's we have five million dollars to give away we're going to log the the applications against that campaign and take away from that money. So it's kind of upending Salesforce a little bit and turning upside down the opportunity in the campaign records to do the opposite of what we expect them to do. So um, it's, I think the the layout looks awesome. I love it. Um, you know, you've, you've clearly put some thought into how a user might use it, adding in a couple of fields and so on. Um, I think the next step would be to think and this would be something that you do with your stakeholder, right? This isn't something you'd necessarily make up, make up, but what are the stages that an application might go through it within an organization, right? So maybe application received, first review, um, escalate, you know, whatever the, the process is, second review, uh, rejected, further information needed, approved, you know, those sorts of stages you need to, and this is the hard bit. This is always the hard bit when you um, are working with a client, it's getting them to lock down what their process is on paper before you start building it in Salesforce. Um, you'd think they'd agree, but they very rarely do. Um, so I think that other than that, I think, I think um, then being able to go back to the campaign mm -hmm. and say, well, we had 5 million, we've given away a million, we've got 4 million left. That's kind of the, the, the process to work through. So I did put that here under grant status. Mm. I just didn't put it in the stage. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe take that work and put it up into that, um, that stage. I had this exact conversation with somebody yesterday about leads um, working with a, an organization in India um, who recruit volunteers. And we had a meeting about it last night and they were trying to say that the lead status should be applied volunteer. And that was it, just two stages. And I'm like, but you've got something in, I was like, what is it with me and these, I just, <laughs> using my hands, it's happening on every single <laughs> meeting platform that I'm on at the moment. Anyway, 
I'll sit on my hands. Um, they, yeah, I mean, I'm like, no, there's more, there's more steps to it than that. There's more steps to the process that you go through. You don't just get an application and then go, sure, you're a volunteer. Um, and they, then they said, well, why can't we have another field for that? And I'm like, because there's one that already exists. You don't need another field. What you need to use is the standard fields so that when there's a, uh, you know, an automation that, that needs building or a feature in Salesforce that already exists, you can use it. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for the feedback. Thank no worries. Thank you, Jenna. And question for you. You can totally say no, but some of us would love to see how you created the application, especially since you have experience in the nonprofit cloud <laughs> and building out orgs and whatnot. Would you be willing to like help us through your process and Sure. For those of us who, who don't know, <laughs> no, she says, please. <laughs> okay. Yay. If I can remember what I did, because I did it so quickly. <laughs> um, okay. So first of all, I created a, um, I created the record in the opportunity. Sorry, let me get in here. So I created a um, grant application record type. And then uh, I don't usually mess around with the page layout. I wait until I go into the um, application and I create my first um, test thing. And then I go and I edit the page here. And then if you haven't ever done dynamic forms, you have to click in this details box, this inner details. Ugh, it's always hard to get it. But anyway, you have to click in this inner details box. And then there'll be a little thing at the top of the, of the page here that says to enable dynamic forms. And I like to do that because then you can just edit your page layout from here. So I like to make sure everything's clean. Um, if you go up here to fields, you can drag this field section onto the page to make specific sections for your page. So I kind of try to group things that way. Um, and with that, how did you decide like what sections to make and which fields to put in each section? So I had created some um, custom fields, just a couple because there's so much out of the box already with NPSP. Um, so then I, I literally, again, I was in a hurry in between meetings, um, just labeled the section the same way that I labeled the field that was in that section. So that's just right here. You click on the, on the highlighted part and you can rename it there. Um, and then, uh, some of them are already done, payment information, system information, uh, grant information was already done. I added timeline here. Uh, I think one of the things Maria wanted to know was the start and end date. She wanted the timeline, so I made that specifically for that request. Um, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, yep. tying it back to stakeholder requirements and, and listening to them. And then if we click on save and we go to the front end. So what happens when you try and create a new record it, from the opportunity, or I guess from the campaign? Yeah. Oh, from the opportunity. Uh, am I in opportunity? I hate this view. I think it's the console view. I anyway. <laughs> so yeah, yeah here's a new record. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. And Nicole, if we were to like link it up so that we could see what was the what was the requirement? It was like yes, yeah, so that's like linking the um, opportunity to the campaign so that you can track how many, how much has been applied for how much has been awarded and how much is left. So that is a campaign. That is a related 
field on the campaign, right? That's the opportunities here. So you can see what yes, opportunities. You can roll up that information to the campaign record itself. So if you look at the details page, there's actually some standard fields that typically do this, but because we're doing it slightly upside down. So there's these um, opportunities, one opportunities, the value of campaigns, value of one opportunities. Yeah. So you can do some, um, you could add a couple of extra fields here to say, okay, well, what's, what's the funds that we have available? And then take away the value of one opportunities to, to give you what's left. Got it. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> I did not do that clearly. That's all right. <laughs> well, now you know how you can share it with us later. <laughs> And is there any like backend linking that we need to do to make sure that it's in the campaign or you, it's already associated so it, it populates? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. If you do that at the front end, if you say this is the campaign that um, this application is associated with, it'll do those as well. So um, yeah, I don't think you'll need to create any new roll ups. You could try just to um, just to try it out. Just have fun. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jana, uh, for, for sharing your work with us and walking us through that little debug. I am going to share my slide deck again, and then anyone else who would like to present their work or walk through it, if you would like to in a dev org, asking questions, definitely feel free to raise your hand. Um, and in the meantime, I just kind of want to walk through, um, oh, there's so many angles that we could approach this. Everyone, um, feel free to drop your questions in. but. Campaigns are an out of the box feature, correct? In in the NPSP. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we would just go to like the front end, click on campaign, create a new one. And then if if you were, you know, working on this case, Nicole, and you've read the interview notes for Maria and you kind of know what she's looking for, how might you go about including relevant fields? How do you know what those fields might be? Yeah, it's it that is always the challenge, right? Because we know what's in Salesforce. We've got ideas about what can be added. And I think it's it's about sitting down. Often often people people will, will have some good ideas already. They'll either have a, a spreadsheet that they're currently using and those columns reflect the fields that might be needed in Salesforce. And you can kind of go, oh, well, that one exists already but this one's a new one i've not seen that before let's let's talk about that one um and be, i suppose when i say talk about that one i mean just because it exists in the spreadsheet and it's part of the current process doesn't mean it needs to be part of the future process right um it, you might not want to create it in salesforce just because it's there in the spreadsheet so there's 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 existing documentation and processes that you can look at um, you know, if there's a heaven forbid, a piece of paper that people are filling in, look at where those fields might go in Salesforce. Are they necessary or not? And then, <clears throat> and then it's a question of saying, well, you don't have it at the moment, but would it be useful, right? And you know, sometimes it's well, we've always wanted to be able to report on X, but we can't. And you can get well, why don't you collect that data in Salesforce, and then you'd be able to report on it. So I think it's it's a combination of exploring the existing. But this is why you do as is and to be processes, right? By exploring the as is, you're not locking people into following that process. You're trying to understand why they capture the data they want, or they are currently capturing, and why they're following that process, so that you can then make suggestions and talk through the to be process with a very much more informed view of of what is needed. Yeah, totally makes sense. And it's almost like sparking your brain as well, right? You like you you know the interview, yeah, what's available, that that list can serve as a brainstorm of sorts. All right, so we have step 1, we've got step 2, and we have Ramya who has raised their hand, so I'm going to bring them up to the stage. Welcome Ramya. How's it going? Happy Wednesday. Wednesday? It's Wednesday? Hi. Yes, Wednesday. yes. Depends Hi, where you are. It's Thursday for me. Right, right, right. <laughs> Hi, Nicole. Hi, Rachel. Hi. You. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Beautiful. 
I do need to get a mug. I say this every day and then I never get around to it. A mug that has the squaro on it. Awesome. So, I'm sorry. So here is a campaign. Uh, I, I created a campaign named Water Sanitation Fund. And uh, when you view the this campaign, the opportunity, the grant opportunity is related with this. Uh, so here I have created uh, stages for the grant processing, like application mm -hmm. submitted, uh, data compilation and initial review, detailed review and interviews. And there is also a stage uh, called uh, awarded and withdraw and decline if the process, like if the application is declined uh, or so. So these are the stages I have created. Mm -hmm. And I just added the existing fields. I didn't create any new fields. Um, so this is how I have uh, done this task. Awesome, Thank love you. it. Um, we'll go back and take a look. Oh, no, keep sharing. Yes. We'll go back sure. and, and take a look at the campaigns in a sec. But um, I wanted sure. to point out a couple of, I mean, nice job with the stages, nice job with um, mm -hmm. the, yeah. uh, so I go back to the opportunity. With Option, the yeah. with the, the layout and stuff, like you know, yes. out of the box. So um, if you look down the right hand side, you've got the payments and deliverables area. This one. See those? Yeah. So scroll down a little bit. Yeah. So payments and deliverables are uh, a specific nonprofit success nonprofit success pack feature MPSP feature. So they allow you to track when you're awarded a grant, typically there are some conditions, right? The, the, the things that you have to do in order to, to keep getting the money. Um, and those are those are deliverables. So you can actually set up um, what those deliverables are against this opportunity once it's been agreed. So it yeah. might be, you know, you have to do 50 workshops and you know, so on. So you can, so the, the organization knows exactly what's been contracted to be delivered. And then the payment side of things can be used to track. It might be a three year grant broken down into six equal payments, for example. So you can set those those things up as well, which is quite um, quite helpful. Um, how so how did you find this particular um, what's the word I'm looking for? What am I looking to ask? When you went to look at the different opportunity types in the MPSP, mm -hmm. did you find this grant management one already there or did you have to create it? No, I created this grant uh, record type. And then added all the things in that you needed, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I created a record type and then I added the specific stages and these mm -hmm. stages I created after reviewing the interview notes by Maria and yeah. they have on the business process, they had this uh, um, data compilation, initial review, detailed review and interviews, and then uh, final decision. The final decision is like whether awarded, declined or uh, withdrawn. Yeah, yeah, cool, awesome stuff. Good stuff, so bringing in a little bit of the interview information um, mm -hmm. along with the um, yeah, details that uh, kind of you, you've worked out from your, from your own um, experience and so on. So good stuff. And then if you go back to the, the campaign, the Water Sanitation Fund campaign there. Yeah. And the so details. Details is... I, I didn't do that uh, roller part. That's right. Yeah, since I'm not uh, like I have, uh, I'm not clear with that part, so I didn't do that. Yeah. Awesome. No, that's totally fine. I think if you want to give it a go, it would be some good experience for you. Um, sure. I don't know if you've, you've played with roll up summaries before, but even creating those formulas on that page and maybe tidying it up so that we can see, um, you know, here's, here's the statistics, here's the information for the campaign. Um, you could even you could even put a like a graph on it of um, I don't know a dial of here's the amount that we've got 
being mm -hmm. awarded and you know slowly slowly work, working down to zero something like that sure yeah i will try it out awesome thank you fun. thank you for this opportunity absolutely rami i was going to ask if you want to try it out now um and if you don't again that's okay you can try behind the scenes but we love we love some good live debugging yeah yes i'm good to do but nicole the master user yeah. trainer <laughs> <laughs> all right step by step it's live training all righty so so let's work this out then so if we have a quick look at the fields that we have there already what we're looking for is the ones that are that are related to the money right so yeah. we've got the value of opportunities in a campaign and the value mm -hmm. of one opportunities in a campaign now um as i said because we're sort of treating things upside down a little bit the value of one opportunities is props perhaps uh th those names are perhaps not terribly helpful but as we all know if you change the name of a, a field a label of a field in uh, for campaigns it changes it for every every type of campaign so um what we need to to sort of think about is everyone that uses the solution not just the grant people so value of one opportunities in campaign as we are awarding grants that value is going to go up right and the value of opportunities in campaign what does that represent what? like in in the process what what is the value um as we create more and more opportunities what does that what does that re represent of the process So is it like uh, once the opportunity is won, so the amount will be uh, added to the campaign allocation? So, yeah, so the, the value of one opportunity is count. So every time these these are roll up summary, these two fields here, in fact, all of those fields on the right hand side of that column are like roll up summaries that Salesforce has predefined for the campaign. Right. Yeah. And they are looking at the opportunities or the campaign members and adding things, counting things together. Right. So um, we've got the two fields that we really care about, the two at the bottom of that right hand column, value of opportunities in campaign and value of one opportunities in campaign. And they both are adding up the dollar value of the opportunities related to the campaign, but there's a difference between those two. What's the difference between those two fields? Yeah, sorry. That's okay. I'm sorry, uh, can you come again? Uh, did you yes. ask? Yeah, no problem. So the, the, you've got two fields. You've got value of opportunities and value of one opportunities. What are the two? What are the differences between those two fields? Uh, value opportunities and campaign value one. So the value one opportunities will be all the uh, closed one uh, opportunities amount will be rolled up here. Uh, and the other one? The other one will be all the opportunities, um, uh, like like all the grants up or applied, like the opportunities that are not closed. When am I right? Yeah. So, uh, well, it's all of the applications, right? All of the yeah. applications, whether they're open, closed, one, closed, lost. Uh, actually closed lost maybe not we'd have to test that out so value of opportunities in campaign is everything and the volume of one value of one opportunities in campaign is just the ones that have been awarded yeah, yeah. so yeah. um if we have we're interested in both of those right both of those things but we also want to track how much money we've got to give away now is there any field on there that tells us how much money we've got to give away mm -hmm. yeah okay scroll Why down don't... a little bit ramya i wonder if they're sure uh it's a, yeah uh 
Um, what was the question, Nicole? Is there something that shows how much money is remaining in the campaign? No. Well, first of all, how much money do they have to give away? Um, uh, Would that be the value yeah. opportunities, the $100? No, that's, no. that's how much has been applied for. Mm. No? Um, Afshan suggests budgeted cost in campaign. So there are a couple of fields here that are about funds, aren't they? Expected revenue and budgeted cost. Now, you could use one of those fields and potentially rename it, but because that would rename it across all campaign types, I actually think it's probably best to create a new one, right? Yeah. Maybe it's called funds funds to be awarded, something like that. So we could go into the setup and create that yeah. field as a currency field, right? Yes. Nicole, you should have told us that we have to make it. I was looking for something, couldn't find anything. Is there one? I said, is there one? Maybe oh, there is one. I see. Yes, yeah, I know. No question. Yes. Uh, Rahe, Rahe, the question was, is there a field that displays how much money is left to be awarded in the campaign? Now, how much funds are there in total? Sorry. Right. Yeah. How much funds there are in total? Right. So the, so the organization would go, we're going to launch a new application round. We've got five million to give away. We want a field on the campaign to track that we've got five million. Right. So funds to be awarded, let's throw 5 million, let's put a dollar in there. Let's put an actual amount in there. Put lots of zeros. I'll leave you to choose how many. So many zeros. So many zeros. One more. No. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. So we're starting at the top. We've got the amount that we have available to give away, $5 million. Great. Now we've got the value of one opportunities in campaign. That is going to tell us how much we've given away. Yeah. So yeah. if you want to go and um, update that opportunity to awarded, what would happen mm -hmm. to this value here? It would it would change, right? Yeah. So do you want to go so, update that opportunity, and we'll come back and yeah, I'll, yeah, sure. Sorry. So I'm going to change this. Avoided and save. All right, let's go back to that campaign. campaign. All right, so. Mm -hmm. We now yeah. have $100, right? So there's $100 in the campaign in total, and 100 has been awarded. How do we know how much is left to give away in the future? Uh, maybe a formula field which will calculate, like, from funds to be awarded minus value and opportunities in campaigns. Oh, right. Perfect. Do you want to go do that? Yeah. This is awesome. Ram Ramya, you did the developer sprint, right? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, it's, you found me. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, of course I found you. You presented all the time there. And clearly, you know what you're doing here uh, with, with, with creating the, the, the fields and the formula. I 
I hope my formula is correct. So it's a campaign, sorry. <laughs> White, uh, maybe I should edit again. Um, so, uh, since it's already done, maybe I need to go and change or change the amount here. Um, we'd probably or trouble with it a little bit, have a play around and see, make sure the formula is correct and so on. Um, uh, but you've got yeah. the idea, you've got the idea absolutely right, yeah. Yeah, so sure. Yeah, remind. Ram is oh. determined. <laughs> Funds to be awarded, man. Oh, I know. Can you take a look at the field that you're taking away? Ah, uh, I told. Okay, insert. So one opportunities. Yeah, this one I took. One so, opportunity. So slow down. Slow down just a smidgen. <laughs> oh, value. I'm sorry. sorry. No, no, you're right. So close, close that out for a minute and have a look at the formula. Just yeah. Right? Have a look. Have a look at the field you've Yeah, chosen. you're right. It says yeah. number of one number. So yeah. number is not a, a currency field. Yeah. So you, you need yeah. to change that. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. No, no, that's all good. There, there's a, Those fields are all named very similar things. Value one opportunities in campaign. Yeah, I'm... I'm No, what could be the value one opportunities? Did you refresh the page? Oh, yes, Rachel, I did. Uh, mm -hmm. No, I is that the reason that this? Oh, no. Yeah, so there's a couple of comments that raise a really good point that if you check the syntax before you save, although often it throws an error, um, but it um, might be worth. Yeah, yeah, I usually do that. Yeah. I'm not confident that. My... Hang on, I think I think you're just trying to go a little bit too fast. Um, so what I would be doing is going and checking the uh, going to the list of fields and saying what is the the label of the field and checking the name, making sure that I've got the exact field correct. Um, yeah. That's probably what I would do at this point. Sure, sure. I'm sorry. Just to make sure, because as I say, there's quite a few in there and sometimes the API name's different to the, you know. Um, yeah. But one opportunities in campaign. So it's value one opportunities in campaign. But the field name says amount one opportunities, which is uh, what I thought. You yeah, think. but I chose, uh, yeah, let me Let's have a look. A bit small, I'm just zooming in. Uh, insert field, value, when I select, value one opportunities in campaign it says amount one opportunities. Opportunities. Yes, so yeah, i'm not sure i would say it could potentially be a um a refresh issue because i think uh -huh. that's right um it could be yeah i would yeah i would say it's potentially a refresh challenge i have i don't know about other people but i've found over the years that the um uh, the refreshing of pages to make something do something can take a lot is, is taking like it used to be instantaneous yeah. and now you can refresh multiple times and it still isn't showing up which i don't i'm not yeah. set enough to know why that is the case but i would go away and troubleshoot that um yeah. try creating a few more opportunities try making more of them awarded or declined and, and seeing where you end up sure yeah, yeah. Check it, check it again in, in a couple minutes, and then Ramya, definitely let us know what happened yeah, if you're dude. able to find the solution. 
Um, Sean, oh, Sean. so many hands. Yep, go for it. Uh, yep, yeah, Nargi says yes. log out, log in would work. Shift yeah, some of them. <laughs> okay, well, keep us posted. Thank Good you job. so much for sharing, Ramya. Okay, everyone, uh, let's get some feedback from Nicole on these presentations overall. What have we learned? And then y'all can drop your questions in the chat and we'll, we'll, we'll have a little bit of time for Q&A after that. Sure. Um, look, it's always good to see stuff in action, trying things out, um, some good use of different techniques with the page layouts and so on. Um, I always love the way things look different. It doesn't matter who builds, you know, Salesforce is never the same. So that's good. Um, I think both presenters had good uh, had had made good use of their listening or reading skills with the interviews from the stakeholders, adding in either some new fields or changing the um, the stages to match the the process. So yeah, some good some good stuff there. Definitely, yeah, and some really great suggestions on helping Ramya. <laughs> Will the decimals matter? I'm not sure. Again, typically not, but yeah. Probably not. I, I, but again, I know nothing about formula fields. I absolutely failed that super badge and decided not to do it. So, uh, <laughs> speaking with that. All right, um, everyone. Well, that is a quick little introduction into nonprofit cloud. Uh, this has been really interesting for me to learn, and we did have a request to put on a uh, nonprofit sprint. So if you do want a nonprofit mini sprint, you can let us know by clicking complete experience in the module of the LMS or skills challenge series. If you want more of these things, then definitely let us know because this is a new topic for all of us. And with that, everybody, I'm seeing lots of yeses, yeses, yeses in the chat. We'll do a little bit more time for Q&A. If we have it, I will do a 10 second countdown and then we will wrap up. Mostly all I'm seeing is yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> more, more questions to ask will come after we have a little bit more information. Yes, and thank you, you're welcome. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much, Coach Nicole. Thank you, Jana. Thank you, Ramya. Send me a message with your information so we can get those uh, swags sent out to you. Um, oh, we have a question really quickly here. Let me grab it. Uh, stop typing. It's going too quickly. There we go. Ismael asks, how to plan the objects we need and fields we create in each object before we start building the app? Uh, wow. Okay. That is a massive question. Um, so, and I, I suppose it Oh, far out! That is huge. Um, <laughs> that is that is like for something else. Go ahead. Yeah, that is that is like the whole job, right? Um, so you go through a discovery process. You're talking to people. You're learning about what they do and how they do it. And as you do that, you're thinking with your experience. Oh, that's an opportunity process, or that's a that's about a contact a person. So, and. It's a combination of bringing all of that information together, as well as looking at, as I said, existing documentation. They may already have a database that they're or something else that they're moving off that would have a long list of fields in it. Don't bring them all in. Talk to them about what you want. But um, for example, we use uh, if when you're writing your user story. It's about breaking it down into manageable chunks, right? So you might feel completely overwhelmed about all of the information you've learned. You don't need to write all the fields and document all the fields that you're getting and objects that you're going to use for everything at once, unless you're an architect. Break it down into the user story. So, for example, the, the organization I was talking to last night about volunteering applications, we focus just on that application form. What needs to be on the application form? And therefore, what needs to be in Salesforce when that application comes in and creates that, that lead? So we break it down into a smaller elephant, um, a smaller bite of the elephant than the whole thing. Maybe that's that's the way to start. Okay. That was a really great explanation uh, for such a big question. <laughs> uh, and then Rohan had asked how 
um, how to submit, how to share feedback on uh, what, what you loved, what you didn't. I'm going to share my screen really quick. This is a bit of a new process here at Clicked. Actually, in the experience, you've got pre-work, intro, task, and feedback after the end of this experience, or maybe now because it is now uh, you know 4.30, the feedback module will light up. You'll be able to click on it, and then you can click complete this experience. That is where you fill out the feedback. Exactly. It unlocks through automation. Finally, we got something working there for automation, so y'all can submit there. <sighs> awesome. Okay. All right. I know. It's great. All right. Well, thank you so Thanks much again, everyone. Nicole, for being here, and we will see you all next time. Bye, Take everyone. Care.